Hi, welcome back to Pragmatic Agility. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at implicit and explicit joins in SQL. We're also going to briefly discuss which one you should be trying to use. Now, implicit joins is the older school of writing SQL joins. It was around first. Explicit joins showed up later. But old habits are harder to break, so that's why you still find some individuals and some shops still using implicit joins. And to demo those types of joins, we're going to be using the dBeaver IDE, which is a neat IDE that supports multiple databases. It works with both MySQL and Microsoft SQL, as well as many others, for example. And for this uh, sample, we're going to be taking a look at this database with the articles table, the article tag table, and the tags table. So we're going to write a simple query just to pull out the articles and their tags. Now this is set up with a pivot table, and that's because one tag can have many articles, and one article can have many tags. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go to my SQL editor, new SQL editor. Actually, we're going to go into Query Builder. That's that's part of the Enterprise Edition of dBeaver. If you have the Community Edition, this won't this won't be available for you. So I'm going to go ahead and drop in the articles table. Next, I'm going to go ahead, you know, I'm going to select the title from the articles table table. Next, I'm going to go ahead and drop in the article tag table. And then I'm going to go ahead and drop in the tags tables. And you can see that it's joining the tables for me. It seems that I've done a decent job given my column names, uh, names that dBeaver could make sense of. It has automatically joined it. Now, if I was working with tables that didn't have good naming schemes, then dBeaver would not have been able to correctly join the tables, and I, most likely I would have had to go in and fix the joints. I've had that happen on a couple databases. So I'm going to go ahead and select the name from the tags table. So now we have the title of the article and the name of the tags. And dBeaver is automatically using the explicit join syntax. So we can see that I'm selecting the column names from the Homestead Articles table, aliased with an A. Then I enter join the article tag table, aliased with AT, which is just highlighted as dBeaver believes it's a special uh, word, but in this context, it's not. And that's joined on A ID, which is article ID equals AT article underscore ID. We then join the article tag table on the tags table, which is aliased with a T on at.tagid equals t.id. Now let's go ahead and move into our SQL editor from here. I'll go ahead and save. And if I run this, I'll get some results back. Let's go ahead and add in a filter. I'm going to filter to just article 1. Say where a.id equals 1. So this is going to be just the article with ID 1. And we can see all the different tags this article has. Now, I've, I've loaded this with a bunch of dummy data. So the title of articles is actually just a name, and the tags are actually just jobs or made up jobs. Um, so that's why they don't really look like real tags and real article titles. Uh, so let's go ahead and do an implicit join. Now, I can't use the query builder for that because DB will use explicit joins when I build. So I'm going to go ahead and say select a.title comma t dot name from now here's where the implicit join starts we list the table names we don't uh, we list all the table names delimited by commas so articles article tag and tags t and we are going to start our joins where we need an a for an alias there where a dot id equals a t dot article id you can see that follows this join we have a where here and that's copying this join up here. And at.tagid equals t 
tags.id, which is the tags table. And let's go ahead and put our filter in. And a.id equals 1. And if we run this, we get the exact same results. These queries are equivalents. Um, and the reason you want to try to use explicit joins instead of implicit joins is because it's more clear where the, where the filters are. So on the explicit joining, we can see that we have the uh, keywords inner join, the table name. Now, we use the full name, which was the database and table name, but it would work fine if I got rid of that. So you can uh, be more specific or less specific depending on how you're running your queries. So I'll just make these the same by, uh, by removing the full database name. Go ahead and run that, make sure it still works. It still does. So the explicit join explicitly indicates where the join is occurring. We have the inner join keyword as well as the joining with the on statement. And the filters are kept separate. So we have a where a id equals one. Now, in an implicit join, that's not the case. We can actually mix our filters and joins up. So I could take that filter, put it right in between the joins, and this will still work. This is still syntactically correct. And it's small enough that you can still read it reasonably well. But as the programs grow in size, this can become more and more trouble to read and it can become easier to make a mistake with. So the reason you want to use explicit joins is because it helps separate your filters from your joins whereas the implicit joins it can be easier to accidentally mix your joining and filtering together making the query harder to read so ultimately that's why you want to try to use the explicit join over the implicit join i hope you enjoy this lesson give it a like if you did and subscribe if you liked it as well thank you bye